baby brain cells, killer proteins, the hidden lives of neurons. From their labs in the Shelby Biomedical Research Building, UAB neuroscientists are helping to change the way we look at the brain. Scientists once thought that the structure of the adult brain was fixed. They now know that it changes constantly in response to learning, disease, even exercise. The concept is called neuroplasticity. It is opening up exciting new fields of research and producing dramatic images of the brain in action. Neurobiologist Linda Wadish studies newly generated neurons in the adult hippocampus. We're interested in uh, both how these uh, newly generated neurons uh, contribute to the activity of this brain region and also how uh, um, various conditions like exercise, environmental enrichment, um, seizures, different disease states, how, how those uh, conditions can actually affect the uh, development and the maturation of these newborn neurons. In this image, Wadish has captured nerve cells in the act of being wired into the brain's neural network. Uh, these cells are, are mature granule cells and now the, the other red cell um, up in the corner is a, a inner neuron. It's a, a, a neuron that releases an inhibitory neurotransmitter called GABA. And what this uh, figure depicts is that the axon, so these small uh, red dots that you see around the blue cells, um, the axon of this inner neuron is contacting some of these uh, granule cells and forming synapses. Most of the brain's granule cells are created in the first few weeks of life, but the process continues into adulthood in both mice and humans. And this is from a two-week-old mouse, and you can see there's a large number of cells, and you can actually see the axon, um, the axons of these cells that um, sort of form a bundle and project to um, the next cells that you, that you can't actually see. Um, now on the right side is the same uh, section from an adult animal and what you see here is that there are many fewer cells uh, but it turns out that the individual cells have the same properties um, as they do in the newborn or in the, in the young animals. Wadish identifies newborn neurons using a kind of biological fluorescent marker that highlights the cells as soon as they are generated. In this uh, transgenic animal, we have a fluorescent protein called green fluorescent protein that is expressed uh, in these cells right after they have undergone their final mitotic division. So right after the stem cells have actually generated a neuron um, and it has differentiated um, and acquired some neuronal properties, then these cells express this GFP. While Linda Wadish studies the birth of brain cells, UAB neurologist Eric Roberson studies their decline. So my research is, is focused mainly on, uh, on disease and how neurodegenerative diseases um, impair the ability of the brain to think and remember. And, and what we're learning is that that's really, in many cases, it's an impairment of plasticity. Roberson is looking at the learning and memory problems associated with Alzheimer's disease. His lab is focusing on the characteristic plaques and tangles seen in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. So we've taken a section um, from uh, the brain of an Alzheimer's patient <clears throat> and we've stained it with antibodies that have different colors. Um, and so in this one, the plaques have been stained green and the tangles have been stained red. Now, if you took a section from a normal, uh, a normal person's brain, it would just be black here, that none of this would be, would be present. Plaques are made up of a protein called amyloid beta, or A-beta. Tangles are made up of another protein called tau. This image is uh, an image of A-beta fibrils. And what you see here, these long uh, strings are, are these long fibrils made up of, uh, of a series of A-beta molecules. And it's, it's these strings being kind of wound together in various ways that eventually make up the plaques. This image is a, um, a section from the brain of an Alzheimer patient uh, that has been uh, stained with antibodies to tau, um, which turn brown. The most prominent you know, feature right in the center there is this kind of flame-shaped aggregate of tau, and that's a classic 
neurofibrillary tangle, one of the signature pathologies of Alzheimer's disease. And then you see also surrounding that a lot of little tiny uh, lines and squiggles which are accumulations of tau in the processes of neurons. And those are also uh, filling up with tau in ways that are abnormal and are probably uh, impairing the ability of those cells to communicate with each other. The ability to communicate and adapt to remain plastic is a vital skill, whether you're a baby brain cell trying to get wired into the neural network or an adult cell simply trying to talk to your peers. By unlocking the secrets of neuroplasticity, UAB scientists hope to find new weapons in the fight against neurological disease. Certainly there are areas of the brain that are where the cells are dying, but even before that happens and along with that, the neurons in those areas are not functioning properly. They're having an impairment in their, in their plasticity, their ability to change and, and adapt to new situations and accommodate new information. So we're trying to understand why that happens, how it happens, and of course how we can prevent it.